The best way you can support me is with a simple subscribe. Subscribe to my channel for more content like this. All right, Mr. Telefero TV, how's everybody doing? I want to break this story down as quickly as possible. It's going, still going to be in depth, but I do want to do it. Um, I don't want to take 20 minutes to break this one down. James Harden signs a new contract with the Houston Rockets. And for my contract junkies out there, it's a um, he had two years left with 50, pretty much 59 million left on his deal. So he'll add 170 million on to that deal and it'll get him a four year new a new four year deal totaling about $228 million. Somebody broke down the numbers on that deal and they said James Harden will make $571,000 every game, right, for the next four to five years. Sheesh, that is a lot of money. So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing both sides of it. So I want to kind of take both sides and give why people are happy that James Harden got his bread and why people are upset. I, I, first and foremost, I never am upset at somebody for getting their bread, but I get it. You look at somebody like James Harden, He's not been a guy that's shown he can get his team over the hump in clutch moments. I'm not forgetting the fact that the San Antonio Spurs beat the Houston Rockets in Houston in the postseason in the Western Conference semifinals without Kawhi Leonard or Tony Barker, their two best players. And they beat them by 40 on Houston's home court. I ain't giving James Harden a pass for that, period. James Harden's claim to fame is the fact that that his Houston Rockets team about three years ago came back and beat the Los Angeles Clippers when they were down 3-1, and it was an incredible comeback. I'm not, not taking anything away from Houston, but I think it was more or less about the Clippers folding than it was James Harden and the Rockets stepping up and taking that series. Now, again, James Harden has finished second in the MVP race twice, once to Steph Curry and now once to Russell Westbrook a couple weeks ago. I think he deserved the MVP over... Steph Curry, and I understand, I don't agree, but I understand with the people who debate that he should have got the MVP this year. I don't agree, but I understand their premise, their argument. If you're going to have that type of money, and if players are making that money in this era, why not give it to James Harden? You, you got to believe, with that being said, he's got to be one of the top seven, eight players in the league, right? A lot of people have him higher than that, top five, top four guy. Again, when you finish second in the MVP voting twice you're doing something right for your team he stepped his game up he's very valuable in mike d'antoni's system he was running point guard now they got chris paul we'll get to chris paul in a second so you, you put him in that system he's averaging more assists he averaged a career high about 12 assists a game it looks like if mike d'antoni is going to be the coach of that team going forward uh, james harden's numbers are going to just flourish it, 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 that system fits james harden not a lot of defense a lot of shooting a lot of possessions it fits James Harden. When you talk about, um, if, if you're a person who believes that number $228 million is too high, you're probably somebody who believes that these players are making more money all together. And I'm with you. I side with you. I think these guys are making too much money. I'll take it a step further. I don't know if the league is going to be around in 15 years. They're paying these guys too much money. And the ratings are not, like, look, look at the Eastern Conference, right? If I'm not mistaken, TNT has the Eastern Conference playoffs, right? If you look at the East, who's really going to compete with Cleveland? And look at the Eastern Conference as a whole. All the stars have moved to the West. So going forward, you're going to probably see a lot of sweeps from Cleveland and Boston because they're clearly, I think Cle Cleveland is head and shoulders still better than Boston. And I think Cleveland and Boston together are head and shoulders best and better than the Eastern Conference for, for now. So Cleveland and Boston are probably going to sweep their way, way through the first round of the playoffs. Well, they're missing out on ratings is TNT. I believe they own the rights to the Eastern Conference playoffs. And I think towards the latter part, the Eastern Conference finals, right? And I think the Western Conference finals is with ESPN. So I think that's how it breaks down going forward. The Western Conference might be okay. San Antonio healthy against Golden State. That might be a five, six, seven game series. But the East, it's, it's just not competitive right now. It's just not competitive. So these series are going to be pretty bad. And the ratings are going to be bad because people are not watching the third and fourth quarters of these games because they're blowouts. So I think the TV deals going forward, I think these teams are, I think these, these like the ESPNs of the world, I think the, the TNT, Turner Sports of the world, they're going to want out of these TV deals. They're going to be like, hey, NBA, y'all need to clean it up. Y'all teams need to become more competitive because right now these Friday night games, these Saturday night games, we're not convincing a college student to stay in the house on these Fridays and Saturday nights. That's what it comes down to, that college crowd. 
we're not convincing these college students to want to watch these games they're turning up they're partying they don't want to sit down and watch these saturday night games when they can be lit at a party or a set that's what it comes down to and i think going forward the ratings are not going to be where the nba wants so i think you're overpaying these players when you could be saving some of that money i'm all about i'm all about players getting their money don't make that let me not let me get that twisted but right now they, they don't need this type of money 50 lebron's gonna sign a new extension this all season it's gonna be at least 60 million dollars now it's heading to 50 60 million dollars next offseason he's gonna get paid for real this is a guy that's making hundreds of millions of dollars in endorsement money he's gonna really get paid so to bring it all in perspective if you're one of those guys who thinks the nba is just making too much money all together yes you're gonna think james harden is making too much money but when you look around the league if a guy like jj reddick is getting 25 million dollars this year with philadelphia well it's not too far-fetched to think that james harden should be making 40 some million he's definitely what 15 million more dollars valuable than jj reddick people are not going to these games because they're going to see james, uh, jj reddick they're going to see guys like james harden russell westbrook so if you want to put it in the grand scheme of things he does deserve that money if we're comparing it to the rest of the league now if you want to compare him to um or compare what he's making to like a guy like Peyton Manning or a guy like what Tom Brady's making right now and what Peyton made of his career and, and football players they don't make that type of money and the NFL is doing better ratings than the NBA is all year round right so I mean it's all about perspective what James Harden did do was a bad career move financially it was great but a, a bad career move you take your leverage away now if James Harden believes he might get injured in the next couple of years I'm with him. Get that security, get that bread. And financially, he's making a lot of money. Again, always get your money. But if you're talking about career move, you take your leverage out of your hand. You don't put any pressure on Houston to go out and get you asset. Now, what he does have riding for him is that Houston's general manager, Daryl Morey, he's a risk taker. He's a go-getter. So in all likelihood, he's not going to stop spending money. So James Harden knows his team, knows the ownership. He knows that they're not going to stop spending money. So he does have that going for him. But he, you lose that leverage. One thing Carmelo Anthony has for him right now is that no trade clause. I don't think Harden got a no trade clause in this extension. You lose that leverage. So if the if the Rockets are unable to keep Chris Paul, he has a one, he has this is his last year on his deal. Chris Paul did not sign an extension. I've been seeing that go around. Chris Paul, let me say that again. He still has one year left on his deal he got traded to the rockets he does not have a long-term deal this is a one-year deal after this season he's a free agent remember that so you talk about somebody like chris paul if he goes to la or he goes to go play with lebron somewhere or goes to play with Melo in new york or whatever he wants to do now the rockets still have james harden locked up and if they're not able to get a free agent they're back to where they started at and now they don't have a guy like patrick beverly and now you got guys who are going to want to get paid like Clint Capella going forward, and um, they're going to need a point guard. So I think you lose your leverage if you're James Harden. I'm starting to think this is an ego thing with guys in the league. I think everybody wants to be the highest paid player in the league, but to me, that guy should be LeBron James, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant at all times. These are the most popular players, to me, the best players in the NBA. I don't think guys like James Harden should be the highest paid player in the league or Russell Westbrook. They're not the best players in the league. Right? I think the highest paid player should start at the with the, the best player in the league. And to me, it's a consensus that one of those three guys I named is the best player in the league. And I think it's becoming an ego thing. Now James Harden can say, I'm the highest paid player in the league. What the hell is you talking about? You know, it's an ego thing. Again, I get the Rockets position. It was great by them. They got their guy locked. You were going to have to pay that money anyway. James Harden probably could have made more. If the cap goes up going forward, we don't know. We don't know if it goes backwards or it goes forwards. Regardless... He has his guaranteed contract going forward. So I get his stance. I get his team stance. And going forward, that brother's going to make a lot of money. Again, I think $571,000 a, a game going forward is what it kind of breaks down to, to put it in the grand scheme of things. James Harden signs a new extension. I don't know what kind of impact this will have on Chris Paul, but at the least, you could tell Chris Paul that you're dedicated to the organization and you're going to be around for the long haul. But if I'm Chris Paul, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, like, even though James Harden signed an extension, is he thinking this through? That's how guys like Chris Paul and LeBron think. Is he thinking this through or does he just want to get paid and he didn't really care about the benefit of the team? Because that money is going to be there for the long haul. And I don't know how these guys are going to be able to get 
a lot of pieces around him if they're locked to James Harden he's gonna make like 50 million dollars in the last year of that deal talk to me in the comment box below James Harden signs the richest deal in NBA history thank y'all so much for the time look support salute I'm out I want to salute you, homie, you know, for, for building your own thing and doing your own thing, creating your own platform, your own website. I got one life to live out my dreams, and I'm giving this thing all I got. I interview celebrities. I talk sports. I represent the culture. Right now, you're turning up on MrTalaferro.com, shawty.